if something hadn't gone wrong, if something hadn't gone as awry. And what has gone awry? Brother Bo. The hearts of Yahweh's people have turned to a matriarchal belief system. Based not on patriarchy, but based on matriarchy. It is the spirit of Isabel. It is the spirit of Jezebel who tells Ahab what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and how high to jump. And sends Ahab to trouble Israel. And Elijah says, Ahab sees the spirit of Eliyahu and says, Eliyahu, you have troubled Israel. And Eliyahu said, no, you bozo, you clown. You are the one who troubles Israel. Israel is in trouble. And you know why the people of Israel are in trouble? Because we have sucked up to and kissed up to and we have been in bondage to and under the, under the burden of a matriarchal church system. And if you don't think it's matriarchal, read the book of Revelation. Come out of her, my people, for I have judged the great Chippendale dancer. Right? Wrong. I have judged the great whore. She is a matriarchal woman who has sold the people of Israel a bill of goods. The bill of goods includes Sunday worship, Ishtar, Sun Easter, Christmas keeping, all the things we do know, but a lot of things we don't know. And right now, Yochanan and Eliyahu are in the world gathering an end time army to deliver both houses of Israel in part of the restoration of the tabernacle of David out back from western matriarchy to biblical patriarchy. That's what it's all about. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and he will turn the hearts of the children of Yahweh and Israel back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to live their lifetime because there is a curse on the earth. And, if the, and what is Elijah and John doing today? They are removing a curse from the earth because if he, they do not perform their ministry to remove the curse from the earth, Yahshua's coming will be to destroy and not to reign over the, with the righteous. He's coming to rule and to reign with the righteous. But if, if the spirit of Elijah and the ministry of Elijah and John do not perform the turning of the hearts of the children of Yahweh back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob away from matriarchy to patriarchy, be sure that the blessed coming won't be so blessed. It'll be a time of destruction in Israel rather than a time of the reestablishment of the tabernacle of David that has fallen. Can I hear a good old man? Amen. So there is already a curse. And, Eli and Yahweh says, hey, relax. I'm sending Eliyahu and Yochanan the Beloved before the great and dreadful day of Yahweh, lest I come and destroy the earth, because there's already a curse in the earth. And the curse is that whether we know it and we don't know it, there remains a matriarchal spirit in your home, in your nation, in our congregations, in our assemblies, in our places of worship. And I love women. It's nothing wrong with women. We're not talking about women. We're talking about a spirit that is opposed to Abba Yahweh. Can I hear a good amen? amen. Don't equate a matriarchal spirit with women. Don't equate that. Women are a great necessity, especially for us guys, right? It is matriarchal, it is a matriarchal spirit that is a curse that Elijah, uh, listen to me, I'm telling you something you won't hear anywhere else. Eliyahu and Yochanan are on the earth to remove the matriarchal spirit from the children of Yahweh, to turn the hearts of the children of Yahweh back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and not to a matriarchal system of worship. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. Go with me, please, to Mati Jahu 22.36. Mati Jahu 22 and 36. Again, this message, the spirit and curse of jealousy. The spirit and curse. This will be a two-part teaching. We're not going to finish this teaching today. This is going to be a two-part teaching. Mati Jahu 22. 36. 
Rabbi, which is the greatest mitzvah in the Torah? Yeshua said to him, You shall love the Master Yahweh, Reloha, with all your love, the Shema, with all your being, with your entire mind. And this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And these two commandments hang all the Torah and the Nevi'im. Notice the church tries, the matriarchal spirit tries to take all the mitzvot and say that Yeshua, Jesus, only taught that they were two. That's not what it says. Look at verse 40. On these two, everything else hangs. In other words, the others are still hanging on these two. They haven't been done away with. All right. He said the whole Torah hangs on two. It doesn't say that Yahweh shortened the Torah to two. Uh -oh. you, you follow me? That's a matriarchal spirit that tries to tell us that. So here we have a son of Zadok, a Sadducee, who asked Yeshua the greatest, what is the greatest mitzvah? Yeshua said to love Yahweh Elohim with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. He was saying that the Torah and the Nevi'im have not been done away with, but depend on love. If the Torah makes you a more loving person, study Torah, obey Torah. Read Torah, learn Torah. If the Torah makes you a less patient, more judgmental, more condemning person, get out of Torah and get your head and heart fixed. And go back to church, where they'll teach you about grace 101. Because if you use the Torah to measure yourselves against yourselves, you are nothing but a fool. We ought to be comparing ourselves to Yeshua, not to each other. Because we all fall short of the glory of Yahweh. Amen. Can I hear a good amen? Amen. Fulfilling these two commandments is a great enough challenge that will take us the rest of our believing life. It is a work of the Ruach HaKodesh to change us to love Yahweh with our strength, mind, and soul so we can love Yahweh and our neighbor as ourselves from Yeshua's nature within us. We will encounter many problems in just obeying these two commandments. We'll spend the rest of our life obeying these two commandments. Turn with me please to Yochanan Aleph. Yochanan Aleph 3.11. Yochanan Aleph, 1 John. You'll spend the rest of your life fulfilling these two commandments. I get letters all the time. What about Nadah? Should I go to a synagogue? The woman sat in the chair. She's having her period. Should I sit in that chair or am I unclean? Bubba, before you worry about if the chair is unclean, why don't you practice number one and number two? Love Yahweh with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That you'll do His will and you'll do His mind and you'll obey His voice even when it's not convenient. And don't worry about who sat in your chair before you got the shul. Because I got news for you. That woman may be dirty during her, menstru her menstruation, but you and I could be dirty in our life as believers in Yeshua, dirtier than her sickness. Amen. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it proceed the issues of life. Rivka and I are going to spend the rest of our life getting number one and number two right. What am I going to bat, bat my brains out? Who's coming to shul having a period and who's not? What is that my business? Should I put an usher at the door to check who's circumcised? Would you like me to put somebody at the door? To check which men are coming in circumcised and which men are not. So I don't know which women are in they die. That's none of my business. Yeshua has cleansed us from all things that we could not be cleansed. <laughs> he has cleansed us from all things that the Torah of Moshe could not cleanse us. That's what the book of Acts says. There are certain things that the Torah of Moshe could not cleanse us from. Yeshua has cleansed us from those things that the Torah could not. The Torah could not stop a woman's cycle. Yeshua did. He cleansed it by his blood. These are things that we could not be clean from in the Torah. We couldn't stop lying. We couldn't stop dishonoring Yahweh. We couldn't stop rebelling against Yahweh. And now the Ruach HaKodesh has come. And when we do rebel, and we do, and we do lift up our voices and our hearts against Yahweh, He convicts us of sin, righteousness, and judgment. So there are things that the Ruach HaKodesh can cleanse you from that the Torah never could. That's why the letter of the Torah kills. But the Ruach of the Torah gives life. So if you're going to use the Torah to disciple people, a blessing on your head, Mazel Tov. If you're going to use the Torah to...